everybody in my part of the world it's not saturday yet it's late friday afternoon i'm shooting the video a day in advance because tomorrow i won't have time um, <clears throat> one of our grandchildren turned one years old yesterday and the big birthday party with the family and the grandparents and everything is tomorrow and it's going to take the entire day that's what family is about right let me just tell my cell phone to keep quiet we don't want an interruption right now okay so i won't be able to shoot a video tomorrow so instead i did it today okay so let me show you some interesting stuff first before i make you pee your pants okay you remember the double bubble beanie <clears throat> I'm just waiting for my photographer to come back from uh, Cape Town and as soon as he's back it will probably be in the second half of June we're gonna take the photos and when that's done the pattern will be published but in the meantime Double Bubble Beanie got a friend so this is Double Bubble Beanie 1 and this is Double Bubble Beanie 2 uh, it just needs to have the, um, I haven't sewn the ribbon yet to the inside, so that's more or less what she's going to look at. You can see there's still some yarn hanging out. Um, this is because um, <coughs> my daughter said to me, but Ma, I want a ponytail beanie. What we won't do for our children, hey. So, double bubble beanie is now two beanies in one pattern. One is, there's a an option for a um, ponytail crown and there's an option for a closed crown all in the same pattern so you can look forward to that that's coming soon and then um, like you know I've always got a small mindless project that I'm working on especially in front of the TV and when the beanies were done I didn't have that so I started the end of June crochet project so long and oh my hook this is what is there at the moment this is a a quaint little cardigan that is what she will be in the end when she's done but for now you can see where we're at uh, okay. <laughs> there we go this is going to be um, a little cardigan with a simple cross stitch and she's going to be called crossover cardigan because she can easily cross over from smart to casual it all depends what you dress her up with so this is going to be a real staple in my wardrobe i know it is and i'm very excited about her i think she's going to be lovely when she's done um, this is uh, african expressions freedom it's the same yarn that i used for the uh, let's play sweater that's coming out soon that one with the blocks and the different cable patterns and that we're waiting for the photographer so that is also in line for when the photographer comes so freedom is 75 percent wool and 25 percent acrylic now this is as close to acrylic as you will get me okay i'm not going to go any more than that okay um, I'm starting to work on the lock cabin cowl next week. The yarn is here. I showed it to you last week. I've got the concept in my head. The testers are waiting. So um, <clears throat> on Monday, probably, I will start with the lock cabin cowl. Okay. The third project that's waiting for the photographer to come back is the Lady Hawk sure you've seen her on social media i've been posting about her for a while <laughs> she's massive massive um the bulk of her is granny granny rose but she's got a very elaborate border like you can see she is huge she's got a very elaborate lace border and the nice thing is the border goes around all three edges okay so my mom always used to tease me about this when i was a child the moment i have something finished i want to wear it my mom used to say to me 
funny hak aan die gat. And that basically means off the hook on the butt. Something like that. So yesterday, I went to Pretoria, big city, and I went to see a doctor about my hip. Luckily, I don't need to have it operated. <clears throat> yes, I do have a torn labrum. Yes, I do have arthritis in my hip. Yada, 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 yada. But none of that is causing the pain that I'm feeling. And that he found after he did several gymnastic moves with my hip and my legs and whatever. Okay, so it's inflammation. And I'm going to work on that with aromatherapy. But anyway, I went to town with... Lady Hawk, and I paired her with this hat because I haven't yet made a hat for her. But grey, sort of, this is the hat that I wear the most in my cupboard. Now, if you don't know me well, I only buy black clothing, I only wear black pants, I wear black tops, and I pair that with whatever I feel like out of the knitting and the crochet corn. Now, so, and then I got home. And I forgot to take Lady Hawk out of the car. So she slept in the car overnight. Okay, so this morning, my husband and I got in the car at about 8 o'clock. And we drove to the quaint little town of Paris in the Free State <clears throat> for a funeral service. My uncle died last week on Friday. And um, his funeral service was today. So this morning, I got dressed in black, as I normally do, and I thought, oh, I wore my grey hat yesterday, I want to wear another hat, so I took the grey hat off, and I put the cerise pink one on, and I grabbed my rainbow wrap. This is a wrap that I've knitted couple of years ago and it's got lovely cerise pink here at the at the one end so it's a very nice match put the wrap in the car and off we go now I'm so used to wearing this hat that I don't even think about it it's always on my head because walking with this little bit of hair can become quite cold so when we got into Paris we were a little bit early for the funeral service, so we decided to first find the local yarn shop in town. That's something I always do. If I have time and I go into a town, I look for the local yarn shop and I try to support the small entrepreneur and the small indie dyer as well. And this is what I've got. Ooh, sorry about the noise. Okay, so this little yarn shop is called Anna Patat. A patat is a sweet potato, and Anna, it's like Anna, it's a name, so Anna Patat. Very, very nice little shop, um, lots of cotton to choose from, and some indie dyes that I haven't seen before, which is nice, which is always nice. So, there was a lot of cotton to choose from. Let me quickly show you what I've got. This is Yellow Cottage Yarn. I never heard of them before, which is quite amazing for me. And I bought these four colors to make something for my grandchild, which is, she's having a birthday tomorrow. So this, I don't know if you can see the colors very nicely. This is a very, very soft, limey color. And then there's this very, very soft, nearly like a ballet pink. And um, a rosy, lilac-y color. And a rose color. So I bought eight of, eight of those, two of each, that I want to use. Like I said, this is yellow cottage yarn. Now, I don't know how it works overseas but in South Africa there's only one cotton mill so whenever you see cotton um, I'm never concerned about the quality of the cotton because they all come from the same mill but obviously the quality of the dyeing is another story so I bought the yellow cottage yarn to give it a try and to see what it comes out with um, this is they don't say how many meter 
wonder if it says something at the back. No, it doesn't. It just oh, you know this. Yeah, this is aptly named ballet slipper. Um, they don't give the meter each. They just say it's about 50 gram. Now this, if I look at it like this, this is like um, Moya DK. It's the same base, just a different indie dyer that buys and that colors it. But it's it's a real, it's a nice color. I hope it's going to work up well and I hope it won't wash out and anything like that. I'll report back on that. But that is a project for the summer months. We are in winter now in South Africa, so I will only get to that um, somewhere in the summer months. And I plan on making a cute little baby dress for my granddaughter. And then I also bought um, also somebody that I don't know, wool and fluss, that means wool and flax. Um, the same thing applies if they buy from the same mill. So this is a fingering three ply yarn, it's 75% merino and 25% nylon, nice for socks. I bought three of them, there wasn't a lot to choose from, I'm so tired, there wasn't a lot to choose from as far as wool is concerned, there was a lot of cotton and, um, sorry that was the milk. If you like variegated cotton, you'll be spoiled for choice in that shop. There, there's really, really some very nice variegated cotton in there. But this is what I bought. Um, it's a, it's a variegated chocolate brown. It's brown brown, but it variegates quite a bit. There's quite a, quite a few different shades of brown in there. Um, this one has got, it's like a beige yellow undertone with specks of brownish, purplish in there. Quite nice. And then this one is uh, quite a nice bright turquoise color. Now the interesting thing is together they, like, they, they look quite nice. I can do something with those three together. There, there wasn't an option to buy more than one of the same color. Um, she just didn't have that kind of stock. I don't think this is her best sellers. I think cotton is obviously her best seller. And then she gave me uh, cotton for free that she dyes herself. Um, and what she gave me was a purplish greenish one. It says Anna Petat. Quite nice. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. But I'm sure somewhere this will tell me what it would like to be cut. But now, picture this. I got out of the car at the yarn shop and I grabbed my shawl, went inside, shopped my yarn. Oh, and um, I nearly had a little bit of a meltdown. Okay, this is what happened. I grabbed my shawl. And in the shop I go. So the lady from the shop says to me, oh, that's beautiful, that thing that you've got around your shoulders. And she touches it and she said, oh, it's acrylic. And I'm like, excuse me, what? You say what? What? I said, no, this is not acrylic. This is from Quinte Alpaca. This is Merino, Alpaca and Bamboo. She said, oh, I really thought it was acrylic and I'm a yarn snob. Okay, so back in the car. And we're off to the funeral. Get to the funeral. It's a bit cold. It's right next to the Vol River. So I grab my shawl again. And I go sit in the funeral. I sit next to my sister. My older sister. And she taps me on the leg. And she said, you know, you really need a mustard beanie like this. I said, yeah, I'll still make one. And the service continues. And eventually the service is at the end and they are playing the blessing. So as the moment the blessing is done, the service is over. And I'm sitting there with my bowed head and I'm still wiping away a few tears because it was so beautiful. And I suddenly think, Yelda, you took the wrong shawl from the car. You are sitting here with the cerise pink beanie. I lost 
lost my marbles. Luckily, she didn't take a picture of me. <laughs> I took a picture of her. <laughs> my tears were gone immediately. I sat there and I thought, oh, I'm going to start giggling. Please say amen. <laughs> So the service ends, I thanked my sister, I said, you know, I left the shawl in the car yesterday. And when I got out here, out of the car, I took the wrong shawl. There's a shawl in the car that matches the pink beanie. <laughs> my sister starts laughing, she said, I thought you went colorblind. <laughs> Other people thought of me. <laughs> I'm sure they think this woman is absolutely mad. <laughs> She's no longer like she hasn't got all her grapes anymore. I I will have to make a <laughs> a mustard coloured beanie for Lady Hawk to prevent mistakes like this happening. <laughs> so I sent my sister a photo. I said. When I got back into the car, I said, I'm not colorblind. <laughs> I said to my husband, why didn't you say anything? He says, I don't tell you how to wear your hair. And I don't tell you what to wear. Why would I say anything? I said, okay, well, next time, just ask a question, for goodness sake. Say to me, are you sure that you want to wear the mustard and the cerise pink together? Then at least I can say, oh, hell no. <laughs> uh, it was a good day. We traveled quite a bit today and now we're back home. So tonight we're going to be just peaceful at home. And then tomorrow we're going to start out early because there's a lot of people coming. And um, my husband is going to be the main chef and cook again tomorrow as normal. I will just be his helper and his mental supporter and that will be my slow Saturday a day filled with family love and a grandchild that's had a birthday a first birthday okay I will see you again next week I hope you have a splendid slow Saturday tomorrow and I hope you have a great week as well I'll see you next week